everyone. Good morning. Happy post Monday. You made it. <laughs> I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Chicken and Curtis. Thanks so much for starting off your day with us here on Up With Krim. We're already having a great day and hopefully you are as well. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick also having a great day because it's not as hot as, as it has been. Thomas, we were all out, down at the fair yesterday yep. and it got pretty warm up there, but things are changing, right? Yeah, things will be much, much cooler and it got hotter out there, especially when the sun came around the corner. By the way, I do say that coffee helps uh, at this hour of the morning. Fresh cup for me from that last commercial break. And we are here with you on this mild Tuesday morning, 61 degrees, still a little bit hazy if you're looking off into the distance there, but really it does look like it's going to be a mostly sunny start to the day. There are your mild temperatures, even in our normal cold spots, Wall, Sandpoint, Deer Park, you're right at 50 degrees, certainly has been colder in recent memory here, but we're going to see much cooler temperatures, especially for the afternoons for tomorrow and for Thursday. That's because this storm system, that low pressure area is basically going to be moving towards the northwest in the next 24 hours. So we're going to cover just how quickly those changes will take place and the earliest we could see some rainfall here locally. As you wake up and head out the door this morning, we're taking a live look at I-90 and Hamilton, taking a look at the Altamont exit there. You can see traffic is starting to pick up here at the 6 o'clock hour. At this hour, we're not hearing of any major incidents or slowdowns that will impact your morning commute. But if anything changes, we'll be sure to let you know about it here first on Up With Creme. Well, the city of Spokane is closing a few more roads for work in the coming days. So starting at 730 this morning, 57th Avenue will be down to just one lane between Rebecca Street and Palouse Highway. So that's right near Moran Prairie Elementary School and the STA Moran Station Park and Ride. So the city is fixing a leaking water main in that area, but they do say that they should be finished with all of the work by 530 PM this evening. Then next tomorrow, Wednesday morning, a few intersections along Washington Street will be closed for a grind and overlay project. The Maxwell Mission Avenue, Boone Avenue and North River Drive intersections all will be closed. So if you need to drive in these areas, instead of taking any of these roads, you need to use Indiana Avenue and or Spokane Falls Boulevard throughout the day. It is 603. Let's take a look at today's top stories. An investigation this morning into an employee who died at the Geiger Amazon facility. So we're told that this happened there at Amazon. A spokesperson says two employees were working on the robotics floor when one of them collapsed. 911 was called and medics tried to save the person, but they did not make it. The company says there's no indication the death was work related at this time. The day shift at the facility was canceled and employees were sent home with pay. The family of the deceased worker was contacted. A lot of our viewers responding to our interview with longtime radio talk show host Dave, Ken and Molly. This morning we know more about their next steps. The three will be holding a Dave, Ken and Molly announcement party next Tuesday at the historic Fox Theater where they'll be announcing their next moves. It's a free event to attend, but you do have to register in advance. So be sure to go to the Fox Theater website if you're interested in getting in and being a part of that party. Well, the Garland Theater announced they will start showing sensory relaxed screenings. So here's what you can expect. The lights will be slightly brighter and the volume will be softer. There will also be two designated show areas, one where you can move around and dance and engage in the movie, and the other is where you can enjoy the movie seated. Tickets are just five bucks. The PG-13 movies will be screened on the second Tuesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. The movies for, are for all ages, are on the second Saturday of each month starting at 11.30 a.m. That is a look at your morning top stories. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump will face off in their first debate. You can watch that debate right here on Krim 2 at 6 p.m. Now, this is a pivotal moment in the campaign for both candidates with thin polling margins between the two. I think he's gonna lie. There's no floor for him in terms of how low he will go, and, um, and we should be prepared for that. If I destroy her in the debate, they'll say, Trump suffered a humiliating defeat tonight. No matter what. Now, there will be no live audience in the room during the debate. The two are not allowed to have any props or pre-written notes on the stage either. However, they will get a pen and a notepad to take notes on during the debate. The candidates' microphones will be muted when the other person is talking with only the moderators allowed to ask questions. 
But right after the presidential debate, Krem 2 will be taking part in a debate between Washington gubernatorial candidates Bob Ferguson and Dave Reichert. Our sister station, King 5 in Seattle, is the one hosting this debate. Our very own Mark Hanrahan will be one of the media members asking the candidates questions. So you can watch the gubernatorial debate right here on Krem 2 starting at 8 tonight, followed by a special edition of the Krem 2 News at 9. We have a large courthouse. We just finished having two sensational, nationally significant, internationally followed uh, trials in the Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell cases. Uh, I would expect that uh, Ada County will be the likely situs of this trial. The trial for the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students will be moved to another county. The judge said that he was concerned about getting a fair trial in Lataw County because of the media coverage and some statements that public officials made suggesting that Brian Koberger is guilty. Koberger, of course, is the man charged in the stabbing deaths of Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, Kaylee Gonsalves, and Ethan Chapin. He did plead not guilty. His trial is scheduled to start in June of 2025. Our station in Seattle spoke to a lawyer for perspective on the decision to move this high profile case. The legal analyst Mark Lindquist says Judge John Judge's decision to move Brian Koberger's trial out of Latow County hinged on two things. Number one, whether or not the defendant could receive a fair trial from local jurors. And number two, whether or not the local courthouse could handle this major spectacle of a trial. On the first factor, Lindquist says judges and lawyers overestimate how much jurors are tainted by media coverage. In my experience, and I've done some high profile homicide cases, jurors come in with a pretty open mind. No matter what they've heard, uh, they base their verdict on the evidence. But on the second factor, Lindquist concedes. The judge knows whether or not his courthouse can handle a major spectacle trial like this. The family of Kaylee Gonsalves released a statement saying in part, the family is incredibly disappointed in the judge's ruling granting the change of venue. Going on to say, if the judge knew Latow County could not handle this trial for safety reasons, not enough court clerks, logistics and lacking space, why did we waste over a year in a county he knew was not going to handle the trial? They also criticized having a University of Idaho employee as an expert witness, along with allowing Koberger to appear dressed in a suit for every television hearing. Gonzalez's family believes the trial deserves to be held in Latow County to help the community heal. Number Lindquist one, agrees. Cases really ought to be heard in the same community where the crime occurred. So the trial will more than likely move to Boise. The Idaho State Supreme Court will make that call, but they have not set a timeline for when that'll happen. In an interview with Krim 2, the family of Kaylee Gonsalves says they believed a fair and impartial jury could have been found in Lataw County. They shared their frustration about the judge's concerns about keeping the case out of Lataw County. It is 6.09, a.k.a. 12 minutes away to sunrise here, and I've just been peering off towards my right and towards the eastern sky. It is beautiful out there. Love the red shaded clouds from that sunrise incoming. Definitely picture worthy out there at the moment. As we look ahead at the day planner, the cloud cover does increase through the day here, and it will get cloudier by this evening as our rain chances increase early tomorrow morning. Could be as early as 2 a.m. to see our first raindrops in the northwest, but today dry, still warm, just not as hot as it was yesterday. But coming up, I'll show you how much cooler temperatures will be tomorrow after a cold front quickly passes through. 